Hello, hello, and welcome to the channel. My name is Yudi, and I go by Yudi on the Glow here on my other social media platforms. So make sure you subscribe to me here. Go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and hit that bell. I'll wait. Today, I want to share with you guys my thoughts on the Grammy red carpet looks and some of the performances for this year, 2024. If you're interested, please stay tuned. So for a quick rundown of how we're going to do this, because this is my first time doing a video like this. I'm going to start with my favorites. Then we're going to move on to my not so favorites. But let's talk about ways we can make it work. And then I'm going to touch on some of the performances. As a disclaimer, I do not have a fashion background, so I'm going off instincts, feelings, and vibes. So let's keep it cute. Let's be respectful. Let's have a good time. So let's jump right in. Now to start off, I'm going to take a little bit extra time on this one, then we're going to keep it moving. For the very first look, I want to talk about Tyla. Shout out to South Africa. How's it? All the things. Y'all still say how's it? When I tell you water was everywhere, and currently I have Truth or Dare on repeat. So super proud. 22, no album, her first Grammy. That's big. That's really big. But let's get into her outfit. She was wearing Versace. She had this soft green number that was bejeweled with crystals. And now for this look, since I do feel like a proud big sis, I feel like the styling was so her. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's something about this look that reminds me of something that Halle Berry wore in the past, but I can't, I can't figure out what look it is. And the other aspect of this look, I feel like it really does match her style. That's why I added it to my favorites. I have to say the close-up shots of the bust and up are my favorite. Now with the bottom half, I kind of would have wanted to see probably like a solid skirt and, and then have like the different panels coming off. But the way it's done is very true to Versace draping and also Tyler's style. And then you still kind of get like that water feel. Did you guys pee how they played Stella's Water when she was accepting her award? I don't know if that was intentional or not, but I was just talking about that song, another great song. So major shout out to Tyla. I'm excited to see more things from her. So yeah, next up I have to talk about Fantasia. Now Fantasia was wearing conj tree and I love all the lines and the linear geometry. I love how it worked in such a way that the lines were not clashing. They weren't harsh, even though they were going in different directions. It was refreshing to see for me. I also love seeing the line details extend to her gloves, the lip ring was an added touch her hair and makeup and styling all of it was completely on point i truly enjoyed this look from vintage i feel like she slayed it down next time i have taylor swift and when i saw this i thought okay this dress is very classic is very effortless is very timeless then when i found out it was scaparelli i was like okay that's why i like it because i like scaparelli over here and i feel like with the hair is giving a little bit of jessica rabbit but when i really look at the overall styling of it it is very safe it's like extremely safe um i feel like it was giving beautiful gowns <laughs> because the dress is done well but i feel like it needed an extra something an extra oomph that was missing from the style my personal opinion now in terms of her accepting her award i'm not gonna go too in depth on that because people have already done it um but i will say with celine dion one third of the vocal trinity with her I realize she makes me feel a little anxious and a little worried. I just hope wherever she is is super peaceful and she has access to the best care money can buy. So shout out to Celine. Like, I feel like it was a huge honor for Celine to like grace us with her presence considering all the things she's been going through. So I really enjoyed seeing her there. Next up, I gotta talk about Niecy Nash. Now, Niecy was wearing a Mark Bauer and it's very over the top with chunky sequins. It's loud, it's in your face and I'm here for it. And I feel that it really matches her personality. Like, in recent years, Nisi has been walking around with this glow that's radiating genuine happiness. And it's like infectious. When I see her, I want to smile cause, because I love all the things that are happening for her. And I'm still riding the wave of her recent acceptance speech. I don't know what a word show it was. But in that, she said, I got to thank me for believing in me or never giving up on me. Whatever she said. I'm going to thank me for believing in me and doing what they said I could not do. I loved it. <laughs> So I had to include Nisi Nash because I love the look on her. It matches her personality, her style, all the things. Next up, we have Victoria Monet in custom Versace. And in case you guys didn't know, this is a no Victoria slander zone. I really love her down and I need people to stop playing with her. And I feel like she's just not starting to get that much more credit than she deserves. She's been in the game 15 years and her acceptance speech told you even more about it. I think she walked away that night with three Grammys and I'm here for her. I will never forget the VMA snubbing her and telling her she wasn't ready. But you know what? We gonna move on. So let's talk about the dress. The entire look was glowing and radiating. Like she looked so moisturized and glossed down. And the fit of the dress was perfection. The corset fit like a glove. There was no gaping, there was no gapping. And I enjoyed the timeless draping in the back. Like everything about this look 
was so put together, was so glamorous, and also it was a little bit laid back. Like we've seen this kind of silhouette before, but it wasn't boring at all. It gave a boldness and a glamour that money can't necessarily buy. I really feel like if the Academy Awards Oscar was a woman, it would be Victoria in this dress. Like everything about it worked so well and i also love how she color coordinated with her family and the whole family is gorgeous but yeah that dress literally quite literally was made for her the color and everything everything was on point when it came to her look for me next up we have ice spice with ice spice i could have sworn she was wearing baby fat i thought she's wearing baby fat i'm like more kind of baby i didn't know i was confused at first but she was wearing blue marine i'm not too familiar with them and it was so true to new york instantly i'm thinking 90s hip-hop i'm thinking kim boxy total that's where my mind went when i saw this look for me it felt like i'm finally getting a complete look from her something that's not like jersey like or high stretch material that you can get from you know your local store it was giving me a full look that wasn't boneless that wasn't unstructured and i'm here for it so i don't know who styled her but i want her to keep them around because it still gave that new york perspective but it also had its own sex appeal and its own structure so i think it was a good fit i want to see more looks like this for our white spikes and now we are with chloe she is wearing gupta and one thing about it i love this hair color on her this is her color i want to try and ever since the sisters went solo i've been loving seeing chloe find and grow into her style as a solo artist color the tones the embellishments on this dress were a great pick for me if i were to make a minor like a very minor alteration one of the things i would have done instead of having that lower cut right below the belly button i would push that right above it or on the other side of the dress is not attached on the hip waist area i would exaggerate that hump around the side so it kind of came up a little higher i would love to see what that would look like but overall i'm loving this look especially for chloe now next up when i saw this person i said i know that ain't who i think it is it goes i see her in a minute maybe i've been under a rock because i do tend to be under a rock but i haven't crossed paths with ellie in so long one thing about it everywhere i go the live version with ellie golding and um lizzie or lizzy when i tell you i used to have that song on repeat that song got me in a chokehold and she delivers the most heavenly note at the very end of that song that's what made me an ellie fan that's what made me ellie fan so this i feel like this is how you do a romantic mesh i really do if she were to take it there and add one of those hats not like a full hat but maybe like maybe like a derby style hat you know something lace and flat you know something you could wear to the side i feel like that would take it to um very much liable to poison your lover's food or drink or um i didn't mourn too long when he didn't come back from the war you know that kind of vibe um yeah i was just really happy to see ellie because i haven't seen ellie in a minute but i did love the match and the romantic feel of it i will try to throw a hat in there somewhere next up i have carolyn polachek and she's wearing oliver day skins y'all excuse me if i got that wrong and with her i'm not familiar with her or the designer but i'm not mad at this look at all the vision is very clear and very there and it's very believable she doesn't even have to sell the look because her and this dress they they go together like two peas in a pod did I say it right? Two peas in a pod or a pot? One of those. I personally really enjoy this look. It feels like I don't have to ask any questions. I don't have to have any doubts. I have a clear vision of what her aesthetic is and there's no need for questions. Now, I do believe this is a vintage pool or vintage expire. She doesn't have to sell this look because it just matches her so much. So, Carolyn, she did that. Next up, I have Arya Star, and this may not be everyone's favorite. The color alone can kind of make you think of Princess Jasmine, but it's giving a heavy Y2K vibe. And with this, Arya Star and Tyla, they have similar body types and they also have similar style aesthetics. And it's it's just there. It matches her style so well that I had to include it on one of my favorites. It doesn't feel like someone forced her to be in this outfit. It feels like someone showed her. She's like, yeah. Everyone knew in the room, this is what she would like to wear. This is something she'll be comfortable in, and it works. So I really like this look on her. Very true to her style. I feel like it was a great match for what we've seen from her. Next up, I have Kat Graham. She is wearing Stefan Roland. This is a very severe look, especially with that dip. And it really is a wrist, but it was a wrist that was well delivered. I love the angular and the sharp structure of that cape up top. I feel like it takes a lot of guts to wear a piece like this, especially a couture piece. So she's wearing the heck out of it. But I feel like this is a look either you gonna hate or you gonna love. Like, let me know what you think about this look. And kind of on that same token, we have Don Richards. She is wearing this rose. And I personally feel like it's fun, it's different, it's out there, it's drama. 
you know? And it's memorable genre. As far as like references go, the first thing I thought about was the Children of the Forest. <laughs> <laughs> and I also thought of anime. Is it anime or anime? I never know how to say it. But I also thought of like anime references too. I saw some people saying like they'd be so irritated if she was wearing this, saying, oh, this is such an inconsiderate outfit or wrong award show or this should be Met Gala. But I'm mad. I'm not mad. It gives a statement and it's fun. It's different. I feel like it's like y'all don't get tired of talking about the same thing. Like it's, it's unique. It's something out of the ordinary and it's fun. She is not playing it safe at all and the dress does all the talking for her. So I'm personally here for it. I'm here for the entire look and I'm here for it being at the Grammys. What do y'all think on this look? Cause I feel like this, this is um this is a conversation starter. Because I feel like with this one, there's gonna be a lot of mixed reviews for Kat and for Don. Let me, let me know. So next up we have Summer Walker. She is wearing, let me see, let me see. She's wearing Usama Ishte. I hope I'm saying that right. Y'all excuse me. Again, I'm here for the drama. She got the feathers and the sequins and the way that hat, is so drastically tilted to the side and you still see her face. Face is still visible, face is still eating. I, I'm all the way here for it. Now, when I first saw this look, it took me a while to find out who the designer was, but it reminded me of a Jacques Mousse look from the Renaissance tour. It was silver and it was like fringe, at least a hat. That's what it reminded me of. And really what really brings it together is that silhouette, baby, is the silhouette. I feel like it's very easy to lose shape when it comes to feathers and sequins, but the way this look still had structure, it had a curve and held its shape, especially with that hat, it still had that gentle movement from the feathers and so on. So, uh, Summer, you did that one. Summer did her big one. I don't know who styled her on that. Keep them around. Next up, we have the members of Larkin Pa. Now, for me, I appreciate the fun of it. I like to have fun in fashion. So, it stood out to me. It wasn't boring. It gave me something. So, finding out that they're like a blues rock band from Calhoun, George, I said it makes sense. All of it makes sense. And the look really fit the artist and the genre that they're in. And I listened to a couple of their songs that I wasn't familiar and they're, they're pretty badass. I like their sound. They ended up winning for Best Contemporary Blues, by the way. Um, if I were to change one thing about this fit, it's something about that hem. I don't know if it needs to be longer. I don't know if they need socks. I can permit the sneakers. Were they Adidas? I don't remember. I can permit the sneakers, but I don't know if that hem needs to be a little bit longer, if we need a sock underneath. Something about that hem kind of threw me off, or maybe if it was like a half size bigger to just flow a little bit better. But I I, I like the spunkiness of the look. I, I, I did. I did. I don't know if everyone will, but I did. And finally, for my favorite looks, I have the Leela Downs, another person that I'm not super familiar with, but she was nominated for Best Mexican Music Album. So with her, I also looked at some of her performances and I listened in and I loved the raspiness and fullness of her voice. Like, all of her performances feel like intense storytelling and it feels like she doesn't tell a lie. She don't. Like, whatever she said they did, they did. With our look, the culture is jumping out. And for the life of me, I could not find who the designer was. But I'm all here for something that is culturally rich, authentic, and unapologetic. So, Leela, I don't know Leela like it. But she served in that look. I really enjoyed that look. Now, let's get to the looks that are not necessarily my favorite. But let's kind of talk about things we can do to, like, make it work or judge it up. Or small alterations I would do, you know? So, the very first look that I have that wasn't my favorite... I have to say, um, Koi Leray, she's wearing St. Laurent. And just looking at it, it felt like something was missing. It felt a little overexposed. Whatever the brochure that was up top was a little bit cricket. Had I not known it was St. Laurent, I don't know who I would think it was. It easily could have been from anywhere, in my opinion. When I first saw like the green fur she was holding, I wasn't sure if it was a bag or a coat. I believe it's a coat, but, um, I feel like even if she were to put the coat on, I feel like something would still be missing. Like it wouldn't be enough. Now the coat I know is, is iconic from a previous St. Laurent campaign or runway. I don't know the one, but I know I've seen that style of coat before from St. Laurent. I didn't see any pictures of her with it on, but in terms of how I would judge it up, I'm not too sure. I'm gonna need your help here because I feel like anything I would do to save the look would completely change it. So I don't know if it would need a skirt, if it would need pants, I'm not sure what direction I would go to save this look, but it just felt like something was missing, like it wasn't enough. And next up, we have Doja, and Doja was wearing Delara Bendico Blue. Y'all help me out there. And I feel like there were a lot of elements going on at once with this look. They kind of left me a little confused. We had an intentional 
a purposeful um free the nip uh free the areola if you will with that i'm not too surprised i just feel like she's just comfortable especially given was it her 30th birthday so that didn't necessarily shock me but getting back to the elements of the look when you look at it from certain perspectives it kind of gives you that wet look in some places and not so much in others we had the corset boning in the front then we had a corset lacing in the back all the way from the top to the bottom and then we had the this croc textured chunky heel that shoe was not my favorite as far as how it was styled not too sure of the pc term to use i think the safest way i can sum this up is maybe the trucker look because during the show she did have on a trucker hat she was kind of giving you that trucker look with with the tats and everything that was going on if i were to tweak this look i'm just saying for me but i mean if i were to tweak this look i would commit to the wet look texture whatever you want to call it i would keep the corset boning but i would make the lace a bit more opaque less transparent and keep it in a flesh tone if we want to go for that look and i would swap out the heel for something else that crop texture with the rest of the dress just it, it wasn't meshing for me so those were some of the changes i would do to that look let me know what you guys would do next up we have heidi klum and with heidi klum i was actually disappointed like i'd be expecting her to come with it like because she she knows her stuff at least i feel like she does i felt like the bust area was a little bit off which i feel like shouldn't be a thing for someone who is as veteran as heidi klum so i feel like i don't know if it's a stylist i don't know whose fault it is but i feel like she shouldn't be having bust issues um next the lace was throwing me off as well that bothered me and i'm like y'all couldn't shade match her like what what's going on are y'all trying to sabotage her like what's going on so overall i just kind of expected more from her if i were to make changes to her look i'll make sure her bust is actually fitted first and foremost secondly i'll make sure the lace matches her that much more and then i would swap out some of the silver embellishments with maybe something like a amber or bronze color something that is like a deep burnt orange or a deep um brown that kind of looks golden or bronzy in certain lights or just do a completely different or do a mix of jewels anything but the silver because i just felt like she looked washed out in my personal opinion next up we have kylie monague or monagu she is wearing dolce and gabbana um the first thing that came to mind was game of thrones I'm, and i'm not entirely sure if that color flatters her the most or even the dress overall i feel like it blended in too much to the red carpet it really got lost in the carpet and I, I needed a little bit more contrast. If I were to make changes to this look, I would put her in a darker shade of red, something that's like a wine or a cherry, burgundy, whatever the case, something darker because I feel like I'm losing her, I'm losing her shape when it comes to this shade of red they picked out for her. Next up we have Chrissy Teigen and I haven't seen her in a while. The length and the style of the dress um, veered on a little bit juvenile for me, respectfully. I'm just gonna be honest, honest, be honest. I feel like I would've added a couple to a few more inches, even if it's just fabric or just even even more ruffles to go all out me personally i probably would have swapped that pink out for an ivory on some scaparelli vibes but i would have added just a little bit of lint or gone a little bit more more drastic with the ruffle or something more fun innovative something a little bit different because that dress reminds me of high school homecoming for me and even older movies like different dances like i'm thinking of like 12 candles pretty in pink that vibe so um it wasn't my favorite um yeah so it, it just wasn't my favorite next up we have miley Cyrus and mason margella now now first off i'm happy to see miley um second i feel like a lot of my interest when it came to this look came to the shoes she has on those suede tabby heels that is what caught my eye when it comes to the dress she's wearing now granted this dress is made of all safety pins i feel like there was a lack of contrast in the look like there's a lack of contrast to the point that from afar you can't necessarily see all the detail that went into making this dress and i feel like the craftsmanship didn't really pop as it should have because when you look at it up close you can really see the detail I personally feel like if I were to change a thing about this look, I would want maybe a maybe a short slip or a maxi slip under it, whether it be black, gold, champagne, ivory, whatever the case may be, but something to really get that contrast so you can really see the detailing in the dress. So it wasn't one of my favorites, but I do have other favorites from Miley and we're gonna get to that later on. So next up I have Folake. Let me get her last name. I'm gonna say it slow because I really want to make sure I get it. Alowo for Yeku. Now, sister. Sister. <laughs> okay, 
I want to love this look, but I feel like something is missing in the styling and I don't know what it is. I wonder if it's a little bit overstyled for me. First thought where my mind went to, I went to blade. I'm always gonna love a good coral. So we have the corals on the neck and the arm. The corals did what they need to do. And I also love the zipper detail on the coat. Looks like the coat can be made into a crop jacket. I like that. But if I were to change something, part of me wants to say I would change the shoulder, but also I feel like that's what's adding the drama. So kind of, I don't really want to touch the shoulders. And then I feel like maybe it's a texture thing for me. I feel like maybe I would have committed to the latex feel and look of the bralette and made sure that the jacket and the pants are all in that same texture, all have that same shine. I'm not sure what it is. Even with the suspenders, I feel like I probably would have pushed the suspenders out a little bit and maybe lowered the waist of the pants a little bit. If it all committed to a full latex look, I could get behind that. It's just something, something's a little bit off of the balance for me. I get the vision, I'm here for it, but something's a little bit off for me. Okay, next up we have Patty Cat 2. And I'm personally, I'm personally just not feeling it. I don't know what to do to save the look. And even down to the styling, it's just a no for me. Let me know your thoughts on this look or things you would do to make this look work. I can't necessarily think of anything off the top of my head, but for me, it earned a spot as not a favorite for me, respectfully. So next up we have Lauren Dagley. I'm not sure who she's wearing. Um, when I first saw her, my first thought was Cindy Loper. The Loper or Loper? followed by Miss Frizzle from Magic School Bus in the best way possible because I do love the fashion and looks of both of them, so this is not shade. I get the multicolored threads, I get the pattern in the shoe, and overall this look, I get it. The one thing that I feel like missed the mark, at least for me, is the hat. The hat, I don't know if it's a different texture in person, but it kind of looked like a straw hat or raffia hat, and I feel like that would have been the perfect time for her to go all out with a color. That is the one thing I would change about it. But overall, I get the look and I get what it was leaning into. I definitely get it. I just would have changed that hat. That hat, me and I had hat problems. Next up, I have Calvin Harris. I, I, I like to see men take fashion risks. However, I feel like this suit washes him out. So if I were to change anything, I feel like the blouse that he has underneath is a bit more vibrant. It's a bit more awake. So if I were to do a full on suit, I'll make sure that the suit matched the vibrancy of that blouse. Or you could just go with a completely different color. Like if he wore a red suit over top, that... I would kind of be okay with that. Um, I just feel like that suit washes him out. Um, that also made me think of um, was it Landon Barker or Parker? He wore an all red suit. That looked nice. It looked put together. He held it down for the man damn nothing over the top. But it's not your typical black suit. With Calvin, I just feel like it washed him out, the dullness of it. I needed a little bit more vibrance, kind of like what we're seeing in the blouse. And then last in my not so favorites, I have Molly Tuttle or Tuttle. I get the theme. It's a little cosplay for me. Even when you're buying feathers from just local stores, feathers are costly. Maybe these prices look too affordable to me. <laughs> I, I don't know. If you guys have ideas on how you would save this look or salvage the look, please let me know. So next up, we're going to get into some performances and some statements that were made at the Grammys. I personally want to acknowledge the people that at the very least acknowledge what's going on. So that includes Esperanza Spalding, who showed up in her kufia. Also, Boy Genius, who wore artists for Ceasefire um, pins on their suits. I also have Asia Monet, who showed up with a watermelon clutch. I peeped it and I received it. And also Annie Lennox for flat out using her voice to make a statement. I personally can appreciate people using fashion, their platform and their artistry to show solidarity for what's happening and what's been going on and simply just acknowledge and call attention in whatever way. So this is a reminder that Rafa is currently under attack. It is the southernmost point in Gaza that borders Egypt that people were told to migrate to. So do what you want with that information. But I genuinely appreciate the artists who, who are making it known that they are aware. And to round up on some of the performances, I didn't see all of them, but the ones I did see. So with Dua Lipa, I really enjoyed her performance. She made sure she used every inch of both stages. She gave stunts and giggles. She gave extraness. And I was here for it. The energy was there and she full out performed. I love every second of it. Next up, Miley Cyrus. Now, I don't know why I'm surprised that this is her first Grammy. I just won my first Grammy! But I'm happy that she got it. And I feel like it was the extra cherry on top for it to come from Mariah Carey and also MC to MC. That was cute. I feel like Flowers definitely earned it. There were great nominees in this position, but Flowers is really that song. And I love how she was like, 
stop playing like y'all don't know this song. Y'all need to start singing. She definitely channeled her inner Tina Turner and her Dolly Parton on that stage. And I feel like that low key was like a little bit of her piece of her tribute to Tina Turner. And I kind of felt a shift in her performing, like a shift in her career. I don't know how to describe it, but it felt different. With her acceptance looks, I believe she had a black dress and a um, black jumpsuit. And also her performance in that silver getup, it worked perfectly. I love those looks more than I love the red carpet look, at least for the cohesion of the hair, the makeup to the look. I feel like the Margella number was cute, but it didn't necessarily match up. The cohesion wasn't there. All her other looks were spot on for me. Next up, Fantasia did her thing in a Tina Turner tribute, and I love that. I feel like I was being a little bit greedy because I kind of wanted to see more from Fantasia. Like, I wish you could sneak in another song, but she did Proud Mary, and that was a beautiful, a beautiful full circle moment from her auditioning for American Idol, because Proud Mary was one of the songs she sang when she was auditioning. We also had SZA kill Bill, because Bill had to be killed. I love that movie series, so I had to mention SZA. Billie Eilish and What I'm Made For. That song was made perfectly for the Barbie soundtrack. And seeing her sing it, first off, thinking that mic was all the way on, and listening to it again, I feel like that's not an easy song to sing. So, Billie did her big one with that one. And when he's not causing chaos amongst the Caribbean women, um, Burner Boy is gonna bring you voice control, and he's gonna bring you that live band. I love seeing him perform with the live band. I, there's nothing that can compare. Bernard definitely did his thing and he also brought out Brandy and 21 Savage. That was a good watch. And then we had Tracy Chapman with Fast Car. Now to think about it, Tracy Chapman is one of those people where I've heard her music, but I probably didn't know her. Her music really takes me back to like my childhood. It's like so nostalgic. Like I remember if we weren't listening to gospel in the car, we were listening to the soft rock station. So it reminds me of like the quiet storm or listening to Delilah on the radio. And for a lot of people that commented on it, I feel like that song brings so much peace, so much nostalgia, so much calmness. I think she was performing for one of Nelson Mandela's either, I'm not sure if it was his funeral or something, but I remember they were saying like the crowd was so rowdy. Stevie Wonder was supposed to be there. So they just pushed her in front of the crowd and you can hear her so nervous when she started, but then the way the crowd was just quiet afterwards, like it was night and day. So Tracy Chapman, like, yeah, yeah. And last but not least, what Jay-Z said. So yeah. So those are all of my thoughts and opinions on the looks from the red carpet and some of the performances that happened during the Grammys this year. I would love to know what were your favorite looks and your least favorite looks. For me, I would say my favorite looks would be Summer Walker, of course. She wore the hell out of that outfit. Um, Fantasia and Victoria Monet. Th those are my top three. And if there are any looks that you have the chance to wear, how would you change them to make them match your style? Let me know. So with that said, if you enjoyed this video, this is my first time doing a video like this. So let me know what y'all think about this. If I should do more award shows in the future, let me know. But if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and liking this video. Continue telling a friend to tell a friend like the telephone. And I'm going to go ahead and leave a few videos on the screen for you guys to check out. But until next time, bye guys.